Read it. What moment you realize you were in love? Story one. We were dating. I had a rough day. She just held me really tight and I started crying. So mad that I couldn't control my emotions and struggling with clinical depression and upset that having a girlfriend wasn't enough to cure my bouts of depression. She read my mind holding me there, told me, I know, I know, but it's okay, I'll always be here. Fixing it isn't something I can do. But I can make sure you're never alone while you fight. I loved her then, and some small part of me always will. Not in the same way five years later she left me, but I still love the part of her that defined what love is for me. At least I know what I'm looking for now. Not a girl who will fix me, but a friend who knows they can't, but is still willing to be there with me while I fight. Story two. We had known each other for three years at that point, but had never really hung out one-on-one -on -one before. We ran into each other at a bar after we both showed up to hang out with the same person. We stayed at the bar talking to each other until it closed down that night, and I asked her out to dinner the next night to continue the conversation. At that dinner, I counted as our first date. We were about three hours into a conversation. I have no idea what we were talking about at that point, but she was smiling and looked so happy. And the corners of her eyes crinkle up when she really genuinely smiles. And I had this overwhelming feeling at that moment that I love this person. We got engaged last week. At it. I wrote this as I was in a rush to get out the door. But it took off, so I'll add more to the story. Just a heads up for anyone who's lactose intolerant, this might get cheesy. We met on the first day of law school and had all of our first year classes together. We ran in the same social circles, but are both pretty quiet and reserved. We each were in relationships when we met, but mine ended a few months after that. Hers did too, but I had no idea. I had thought she was really nice and really cute, but that she was out of my league, so I stuck to dating apps. Apparently, she thought I was out of her league too. We were together in a group of law students once, and I was explaining a surprise I had planned for the girl I was dating at the time. She told me later that she heard those plans and thought, oh no, I need to find a guy like this. Eventually, we both end up single and with a semester of law school left. We each had given up on the idea of dating after a few bad relationships, for me, and constant stream of bad dates, for her. I had actually deleted my Tinder and Bumble accounts the week before our first date. One Friday night, a friend of mine texts me to come to a bar to play pool with other law students. I was already in sweatpants, drinking a beer and playing Siege, so I wasn't interested. This friend started listing off the people that were there, and one was someone I hadn't done anything fun with in a while. In the meantime, another guy is texting my future fiancé trying to get her to come to the same bar. She's at home alone, already in sweatpants, and doesn't want to go out into the cold. The guy tells her that her old roommate is there. My future fiancé hasn't gone out with this old roommate in a month, so decides to come play pool. The roommate was the friend that I wanted to hang out with. We're standing around drinking and talking when I hear her mention something about a Disney movie. I still think she's out of my league, but I do always enjoy talking to her and am a huge Disney fan, so I join in. We hit it off and spend the next several hours talking about Disney movies and trips to Disney World. At the end of the night, I ask her if she wants to get dinner and talk more about Disney World. To my surprise, she says yes. That first date, we talked about how our families used to go to Disney every year. We realized we had even been in the same park on the same day 17 years ago, which was crazy. We joked that it would be nice to go together sometime. I asked her on a real date, and that was that. We went through a lot of very, very good relationship-building experiences together. She ended up moving in with me fairly quickly because it just felt weird not to be together. We perfectly complement each other's strengths and weaknesses, and we make each other better people. I ended up proposing to her in Disney World the other week. It was really the perfect place, considering how this started. Story 3. My family had a golden retriever that was absolutely terrified of fireworks. My SO and I were staying up late one fourth of July night playing bingo battle from Pikmin 3. We were in the living room when he turned to me and asked, Do you smell that? We both turn around and see that my sweet golden retriever shat all over the floor rug. There was a quiet utterance of, Oh my God, from me. It was quite the blowout, as you can imagine a doggy stress poop would be. Without hesitation, my SO immediately sprung to his feet, opened the door, and started to move the entire 5X7 carpet outside to rinse it down. I took Miss Poopy Butt outside to rinse off her skirts and tail, as well as some cuddles reassurance. I knew in that moment that I loved that man and wanted to spend the rest of my life with him. He leaped into action for a stinky dog that was not his nor his responsibility. Just knew she needed help. He was also there while that golden was on her deathbed many years later. This time, not only assuring the dog, but my mom as well. He's my favorite. 
eight years together in March. Story four. He used to be my co-worker and I heard that he was leaving in a few months. My stomach dropped and I was so sad. Him and I weren't even that close, but I really didn't want him to go because he's just so admirable and so sweet. I knew I wanted him in my life. I wanted him to always be by my side. A few days after that, I checked my schedule and I saw that I was working with him. I oddly got really nervous, and apparently, a few minutes before he was supposed to come in, my other co-workers told me that my face was really red. That's how I find out and everyone found out that I had a crush on him, a.k.a. my current boyfriend. It's been a year since then. Story 5. A few years back, I was about to meet my girlfriend for the first time in three months. We were counting down the days. But the moment I walked out of that airport and I saw her standing there for me, all I saw was her in that bright red dress in front of that overcast background, as if the rest of the world was hazy, very movie-like, if I'm being honest. And when she hugged me, it just felt right, like it was all worth it, and everything was going to be all right. Standing there, surrounded by her warmth and smell, it seemed like she must be the special one if my sight automatically blurs out everything else when I see her. Too bad it didn't last. Story 6. I remember I had been dating my then-girlfriend for about three months. My mom was driving her home, and we were in the back seat and cuddling. She was telling me about her family, who was very emotionally abusive, and in a small voice, she said that she wouldn't blame me if I decided they were too much for me and didn't want to be with her. For a second, I thought about not being with her, and my heart felt like it broke into a million pieces. I immediately felt like sobbing uncontrollably. Yeah, I was in love with her. It's too bad we didn't last for longer than three years. We had something special. Story 7. Given the extensive history with him, there were three distinct moments. We were best friends for six years. We spent months talking before meeting in person. We had grown very close and had a lot in common. The first day I met him in person, I knew I was in love with him. We were both dating people at the time, but grew close as best friends for the next six years. I tried to deny my feelings and kept telling myself I didn't love him. Second moment happened when I was single and he was still in a relationship. He asked me if I was going to the pumpkin patch that year. I told him I probably wasn't going because I didn't have anyone to go with. He knew how much going to the pumpkin patch meant to me. He asked me to hang out and took me to the mall, but then on the way home, he said he was taking me to the pumpkin patch. He said he didn't want me to miss out on my favorite holiday activity and wanted to make sure I got to go. He even bought me treats from the pumpkin patch. Those feelings of love kept resurfacing after seeing how much he cared about me. The third moment was when he came over one night to decorate the Christmas tree with me. We ended up just goofing around and were decorating each other with the ornaments and tinsel. I had never had so much fun with anyone. There was a moment where it felt like we were about to kiss. I knew I was in love with him and was tired of denying it all those years. We finally confessed our feelings for each other and have been together for two years now. Each and every day I fall in love with him even more. Story 8. When she got back with her long-distance and emotionally abusive boyfriend, got really, really dizzy. Fought for her. She left him. We are married at it. All right, here's the full story as promised. It's a long one. So my junior year in college, I transferred to a school closer to my apartment. Because the school I used to go to was on quarters and my new one was on semesters, there was so major miscommunications and odd discrepancies with transferred classes. Long story short, I ended up in an acting class by mistake. So I thought, eh, fudge it, easy A, should be fun anyways. First day of class, I'm surveying the room just to get a feel with who my classmates were. Nobody stood out to me, so I figured I'd just shell up and keep to myself for the semester. Well, 20 minutes into class, walks in this beautiful blonde with a little mermaid dress, art supplies in hand. Since I was sitting in the last chair to stay away from everyone, the only available chair was next to me. So as spunky as she was and still is, she approached me and said, Hi, I'm Anon, and I'm sitting next to you. Uh, okay, I just kind of gawked, smiled, and nodded my head. Well, that week we had to practice some improv, so we were paired up to do the mirror exercise. We got to chatting and found out she was from three hours away and went to this school because nobody she knew was going here. She somehow got my number and texted me that evening regarding homework. I'm sorry. I know this is weird, but I had to ask so-and-so for your number. Every pair has their own written homework, and you are obviously the only other person in class with the info I need. So we got to talking more. We clicked. We clicked so well, it was the most natural, organic, and perfect click I've ever witnessed in my life. About a week later, she asks me out on a date to go see a play. This is awesome. So we went on several dates, became legitimate best friends, and opened up to each other so, so much. Fall break comes along. She's about to leave to go home and asked if I could feed her goldfish for her. Of course I will.
I respond. We hugged, she left, we texted all break. Well, when she got back, she was acting really weird. Sort of unhappy, very sad. She came over to my apartment to play guitar together, sing together, and pick up her fish. And when she was leaving, she looked at me with teary eyes. Sly, I got back together with him, speechless. I got so dizzy, so destroyed that I forgot to breathe. Oh, oh, well, good for you guys, I mumbled. She obviously was not happy with giving the news. From that point on, nothing has changed. I refuse to let things get weird between us. If we were meant to be, it will be. We still hung out every single day, talked religion, faith, life, hobbies, work, school, everything. Most of these things, it turns out, she was mocked for by him for believing in or for particular hobbies. I started my fight. I started being there for here whenever she needed something. I started making little sacrifices for her, helping her with homework, work, driving to work, taking her out for lunch and dinner on occasion and being all around good to her. I never let it get to the point where it was slash r slash nice guys or overbearing, but just enough to let her know that I love her. And she knew. A month goes by, we are still hanging out, and I admit to her one night in the dorm commons, Anon, I have to say it. She starts crying, begging me to stop. Don't do this, please. I love you, waterworks. From both of us. We had mutual feelings, it turned out, but she felt so trapped and so stuck that it ate away at her. We felt like nothing will ever, ever happen between us. But I still was there. I didn't give up. I didn't let us drift apart, and she the same. Another month goes by, and it's winter break. She went to his home state to visit him. He paid for her plane ticket and everything. It destroyed me. I was in a very, very dark place. We would talk on the phone in secret, text in secret, and just try to avoid drama with him. She comes back to my area and she asks me to train her in boxing. I was a trainer. So that's more time we have together. More bonding. We get more and more intimate, as intimate as best friends can get. Our evenings extended from after class or work till 3 a.m., 4 a.m., 8 a.m., 10 a.m., and just drive to class without a second of sleep. We would stay up for hours every single night just talking about our hearts, playing chess, or writing music on our guitars, talking about awful relationships and how unhappy they made us, or in her case, was making her. And no matter how many times she broke up with him, he manages to guilt her into coming back. Finally, one day after the boxing gym, we got showered up, headed back to my place for another inevitable late night of conversation dripping with emotion. That was the night. Fudge it, I said to myself. Fudge this. I'm flipping done. She looked at me from the couch. I was standing with an inquisitive and suspicious look. I walked up to her, sat on the couch next to her, put my hand on her face, and I kissed her. And she kissed back. She slapped me, of course. She apologized and said, I feel like this wasn't dramatic enough for us. We laughed and kissed. We kissed long, gently, and purely. Best first kiss ever. After that, our relationship exploded past the limitations of being best friends. She left him, and we were, and still are, so in love. We started talking about a post-mortem of the events that happened that long winter. She was always in love with me. She felt so trapped with him, and with her own mental ailments, she was living in hell. She finally had someone to go to church with. She finally had someone there. She finally had someone who treated her right. And the best news of it all, she never wanted to get on that plane. In fact, she and her mom talked about shredding up the tickets and never looking back, but her demons haunted her but no more. Five years later, we got married and now looking for a house and planning our family. We have a dog, fruitful careers, and a wonderful and happy life. Story nine. Maybe 20 years ago, so I was dating this woman and things had gotten serious enough that we were doing Christmas with my family. It was late in the evening, hours after dinner, and during that time when everyone's sitting around drinking beer, wine, and playing cards or something. We were just talking about stuff, stuff in general, and somehow the subject of underground homes came up. This is where I made a mistake. Everybody knows that when you are in a relationship with someone, especially a new one, you have to be careful not to tell them what you really think. It's just known that you try to present as normal of a face to them as possible, and part of that means hiding the things that really interest you. That's kind of what we're taught, at least, right? If you don't do this... Then respective meat sees all the weird stuff and will probably nope out of there to find someone less strange. This is one of the reasons why hanging katanas and anime scrolls from the walls of your apartment might be contraindicated, for example. So I made a mistake. I accidentally told her that I was interested in the idea of maybe someday building an underground home. Almost immediately I realized this was a problem. I just told this woman that I thought underground houses were interesting and that I could see myself living in one. That's the kind of thing a crazy person says. That's not what normal people talk about. 
Conversation moved on to other subjects, and I hoped that she hadn't really heard me. The next morning, we got onto the freeway to head back to Los Angeles, and we had a 12 to 15 hour drive ahead of us. As we entered the highway, she started talking. About last night, you mentioned that you were interested in underground houses. Cow. Cow. If we were going to have this talk, if we were going to get into an argument and I was going to have to defend myself or figure some way to worm my way out of this without her thinking that I was a total loser, it would have been better if it was near the end of the drive, but no, I was trapped in this car for the next eternity, and this drive was going to suck. I was thinking, she continued, do you think it might be possible to purchase those steel shipping containers to use as the structure? I don't know if they are strong enough to hold dirt on top of them, but it seems like it might be worth researching. What? What? Not only was she not judging this idea, she was contributing to it. We spent the next few hours brainstorming, and it was one of the best road trips I've ever had. Oh, aftermath. I married the fudge out of that woman. We have a house, above ground for now, two teenagers, a dog, and an unpleasant person of cats, and we love the heck out of each other. Once in a while, we take a look at land prices outside of town or watch for deals and earth-moving equipment because one of these days... One of these days, we'll start digging together. Story 10. To me, there's two types of love. For the puppy love stuff, that's easy to remember when that moment hits. She made and brought me coffee out of the blue while I was working, just because she's that kind of person. It sounds simple, but it showed the kind of person she was. A sweet and caring individual, I fell in love with that. For the real thing? That sort of love that you know will endure the rest of your life? The kind that's completely selfless? The one that makes you feel pain at the idea that it might ever end? Where your idea of the perfect future is shaped around sitting in rocking chairs with them when you're older and watching cars drive by? I can't remember. I just remember being next to her and realizing that everything was different. I was different. I tried to think back and remember if I had a profound feeling, but I hadn't. It just happened. It sounds anticlimactic, but it really doesn't feel that way. Story 11. We had argued before he left for work, so I angrily ignored it when he called. Almost immediately after that, his boss called and said he had fallen 32 feet from a ladder and was on the way to the ER. I have never felt anything like the fear I felt then. My whole body went cold and I knew it was because I loved him. I drove so fast that I beat the ambulance. He fractured his spine in three places and gashed both shins down to the bone. My daughter and I spent her fifth birthday by his side in the hospital. And even through the pain meds, the only thing he worried about was that he had ruined her birthday. And that's when I knew we would be a family. We will celebrate our 15th anniversary in April. Story 12. We went for a walk in the park. He wanted to climb up the, the top of the waterfall. I'm terrified of heats, but followed him up anyway. Thought to myself halfway up, there's nobody else I would go up this staircase for. Nobody. I'd follow him anywhere. And that's when I realized, oh, cow, I love him. Then he took me back to his apartment for the first time. He listened to me vent about the horrible stuff in my life. Got me to confess to my recent suicide attempt. Told me how much I mattered, how much he cared, how he and his girlfriend were there for me whenever I needed them. And then I went home to cry. Ouch, edit, this was a while ago. Story 13. My FWB and I got into an argument about her possibly having close relationship with her ex. She ended up yelling at me and said that we're not even dating. God, what is your problem? Do you like me or not? I then realized that I had been holding back a lot of feelings and that argument forced me to confront it. I apologized and said that I did like her and I was sorry for how I acted and that the argument made me realize that I did like her. We've now been dating for almost six months and I'm still trying every day to show her that she's loved and safe with me. I took her for granted, and I hope to never do that again. Story 14. It was my birthday. I'd thrown a bit of a party, and it was the first time he had met a lot of my friends. He just made such a great effort, asking them questions and listening intently, getting involved in the jokes. He bought me a really thoughtful gift and had secretly teamed up with my best friend to get a surprise cake. There was a moment when we were both sitting on the stairs of my house having a quiet break and I just felt so much warmth for him. I looked into his eyes and it hit me how much he meant to me, how much I loved him and how I could never let him go. I've never looked back. Story 15. Oh man, it was nearly nine years ago. When we met, my girl didn't like me. Apparently when I was trying to be fun, I came off as scary and so it took some time. I was patient with her and eventually she tolerated me. So I was out with my then-girlfriend and ate some bad Mexican food and ended up with food poisoning. I was staying over at my GF's, 
sleeping on the couch because I felt like absolute trash for three days. I could barely move. One morning I woke up and there she was, all snuggle against me. My girl. My. Then GF walked through the room, trying not to disturb us, and my girl growled at her, protective of me. It was right then that I knew I loved her. After my GF and I broke up, I didn't see my girl for a couple years. But then I got the call. It wasn't working out with the new guy, and I was asked if I wanted her. I didn't hesitate. So I adopted my dog nearly six years ago and never looked back. She's asleep on my lap as I write this. My little girl and we still very much love each other. Story 16. I'm not entirely proud of it, but for the first few weeks, my, now, fiancé and I were dating. I had doubts about us. I just had an extremely tough breakup a few months ago and thought that my fiancé and I were just heading the same direction. A month or so later, I started taking Korean language lessons, and on the first day of class, I was running late. I was panicking because I thought I wouldn't be allowed to enter the class or anger the teacher. Out of panic, I called my boyfriend, who was still sleeping, and started ranting and crying. I thought he was going to get angry at me for waking him up. To my surprise, not only did he get me to calm down, he also stayed awake until I got to class and literally took a seat. I was just so amazed by this. And that's when I realized I really did love him. That I couldn't let this one go. And he really is the most amazing, kindest, gentlest person out there. I love him to bits. Okay, haha, that was cheesy, haha, sorry. Story 17. I slid through a yellow light after leaving a TGI Fridays and got pulled over. I had had a few and would have probably failed a breathalyzer. Without saying a word, my GF at the time grabbed a handful of pretzels from her bag, chewed them up, took a swig of water, opened the passenger door, and threw up. I told the cop she was sick and I was just trying to get her home. He handed me my license back and said, get her home. We've been married almost 17 years. Edit. For all the internet judges that have never done anything wrong. This happened almost 20 years ago. Thank you for your fake internet concern. Story 18. We had plans to go to college together. I had been there for two years already, and she was gonna start when I started my junior year. She was gonna move from her home and friends to a new state to be with me. 1.5 years of long distance would finally be over. Until I got a call from my university that due to my distraction from classes and falling grades, that I was not welcome back at the university. I remember feeling cold knowing that I had to tell a my girl I was extremely fond of that the plan we had set so perfectly for almost a year had just fallen apart. I remember calling her outside Sprouts, my head spinning, blood pumping in my ear because I knew I had to let her go. It wasn't fair to her for me to expect her to stay with me in her first years of college. So I called her, explained the whole situation, and showed how even if I did get back, it may be years before I returned to be with her. I remember being heartbroken and on the border of tears as she stayed silent through my explanation and finally my offer to break up with her. And I can remember exactly what she said next. No. No, I'm not going to let you go. I'm so sorry that this happened, but you don't get to let go that easy. I don't care that you have to go. I know you have it in you to pull yourself back up. My family wasn't exactly very supportive of me when they found out I was kicked out. It was her unconditional support and kindness, her refusal to accept my letting her go that made me know for sure I loved her. In one of my lowest moments, she chose to hold tight to me and show me the love and encouragement I needed. I worked for two years in community college with a 4.0 GPA and full-time at CVS to visit her monthly before I was reaccepted to my university. We graduated together in 2016. We've been together almost eight years now and we're getting married this September. I love this woman so much and I hope that everyone gets to experience this joy too. Story 19. The moment I fell in love. When I finished basic training in the army with a few friends, we decided to go celebrate ten minutes into having beers in the club, and my friend told me he knows this girl that was standing across from us and that she was over asking about me whilst I was using the bath. Filled with confidence from when my buddy told me this girl fancied me, I walked over to her cool as a cucumber and chatted away. We danced, exchanged numbers, and even had a little kiss or two before going our separate ways. I loved her immediately, and it was weird, but I knew it. We went on a few dates shortly afterwards and six years later we are engaged. Just bought our first home, and we'll be married in October, and I love her even more every day. But here's the thing, guys. Remember my buddy told me that he knew this girl, and that she fancied me apparently well. It was totally made up nonsense. He never seen or spoke to her in his life, and he thought it would be funny for him and the troops to watch me get shot down by such an attractive girl. I most certainly will be inviting him to the wedding. Story 20.
If I buy candy for myself or a treat I'm really looking forward to, I share it with him, despite the fact that he'd never know if I kept it to myself. On another note, if I feel too cold at night, I worry about him being too cold as well, although he runs significantly hotter than me, and I will try to put more covers on him or curl closer to him. His general happiness and comfort matters to me at least as much as my own, if not more. Anything that would make me happier, I want him to feel as well. Anything that would cause me discomfort, I want to rectify for him. Although he is own individual person which I'd never want to change, I still view him as an extension of myself, or really us, and as a result rank his needs as completely equal with my own. He's such a wonderful, smart, fun person. I'm so lucky he loves me back. Story 21. I'm really particular about the word love. I know the difference between love and infatuation, and I won't say that I love someone until I'm sure I mean it. I'm sure it bothered her somewhere deep down that it took me half a year, but we were laying on the bed and I was watching her face as I ran my fingernails through the hair just above and behind her ear. She loves that. I doted on every little movement of her eyes, her lips and the curves of her face. She had her eyes closed and was just laying there in the comfort of my affection, and I couldn't help but smile. A big, giddy smile that I couldn't force off my face. I dearly hoped she wouldn't open her eyes and see my wearing this big old smile like some sort of Halloween costume, but she did. I looked at her eyes and realized that I wanted to make all of her dreams come true, even if it cost my own. I wanted her to be as happy and comfortable as human could be for the rest of her life. I realized I would do anything to reach that goal. And I think that's what love is. I gaze upon her fondly for another few minutes until she just said, What? As she giggled. I love you, I finally said after great consideration. And now I say it every day and each day that I do, I mean it more than I did the day before. Story 22. Long story, but I was 19, he was 21. We were housed together for an internship. We had an agreement that he cooked and I cleaned. It had been a rough week for me. I was missing my family. I was 800 miles away from home and starting to feel a little sad. For some reason, all week, I was just asterisk craving asterisk chili. I asked Hank all week if he would make it for me, and he always answered with, No way. It's asterisk summer asterisk. At the end of this sad week, I had had my first bad day of work. One of our co-workers called me fat and, to be honest, he was right. Luckily, he had said this to me at the end of the day, so I was able to get in the truck and cry while we drove home. Hank asked me to stop at the store, and I really didn't want to. But I also knew we needed groceries, so I obliged. He must have asked me to come in with him, because I'm not quite sure why I wouldn't just stay in the truck and cry in peace. Anyways, I went in with him, and I was pushing the shopping cart with my head tilted down just enough to where I could still see his feet to follow. Next thing I know, I hear him say, Hey, Mom, what do you put in your chili? I didn't realize it then, but that was the moment I fell in love with him. We lived together for about two months that summer, and at the end of it, we discussed what we'd do about our romance when the internship ended. Tears streamed from my eyes as he told me he didn't think we should try to continue our relationship. I knew he was right. I was from Indiana and had planned to stay there after I graduated from Purdue to take over our family farm. He was from North Carolina and had his heart set on a job there after he graduated the next May. It was a year later I was laying in my bed a week before my birthday. I had been crying myself to sleep the entire week and had no clue why. Then finally, I realized I love that stupid North Carolina boy. Gave it some thought over the next few weeks and decided I didn't want to know a life without him in it. So I texted my two best friends and we drove out in the middle of the night and I asked him to meet me at a hotel in his city. We stayed for two nights and it was at about 1 a.m. on that second night while I laid in his arms that I told him asterisk through scared sobs, asterisk, yes, very romantic, I love him. He didn't say it back, I didn't expect him to, he just held me through the night. He had to get up a little before five the next day for that job he had his heart set on, so he went to work, and my friends and I drove back to Indiana. It took him two months to process those three words. It took him six months to say them back. It took me a year and ten months to graduate, and four months after that, I moved to North Carolina to be with him. A month after I moved in, he proposed to me asterisk over a romantic fire on his favorite beach asterisk. We'll be married next summer. Story 23. We were on a date at a really nice restaurant, and she was sitting across from me. She was staring at something on the other side of the room for a long while before laughing, so I asked what was so funny. She had been looking at somebody who was wearing the exact same outfit as her, 
and only then realized it was in fact a very large mirror. We both laughed, and I went back to perusing the menu when out the comer of my eye I see her look back at her reflection, wink, and shoot finger guns at herself. She did it sort of half trying to hide it, and it— and I love that we are both members of the same goof troop. Story 24. I woke up just a little bit earlier than my boyfriend, and I looked over and realized I never wanted to wake up beside anyone else. What really sealed the deal, however, was when I got accepted to a university on the other side of the country. I was so excited. My boyfriend was over when I opened the letter. I called my parents, and they came over to congratulate me. They looked over to my boyfriend and asked him, So what does that mean for you? And he said, guess I'm moving across the country. We had been together about six months at this point. I thought he was crazy. I still kind of do. But I remember thinking, holy cow, I really love this guy. It's been almost ten years, and I can't imagine my life without him. Story 25. I was just a couple years out from an abusive marriage, and my teenage daughters and I were just happy to be safe. A nice older guy from church started hanging around, offering to help with stuff, always talking to me after services, etc., I thought he was really nice, but I was not looking to get involved with him or anyone else. I was driving school buses, and he called one Saturday when I was on a field trip. I told him when I would be back, and when I pulled up to the bus gates, he was there. Opened the big sliding gates. Had a cold diet doctor. Pepper for me and a pizza for me to take home for the girls. We've been married 13 years now. My adult daughters basically worship the ground he walks on, and he is still the kindest man I have ever known. At our wedding, the preacher joked about what a diet Dr. Pepper could get you these days. Story 26. When a super quiet, reserved person not only opens up to me with really personal stuff, but when I also feel comfortable doing the same. Not just any quiet person, but someone who's always on my mind. Someone I have a lot in common with personality-wise, and who makes me smile like an idiot whenever I see I have a notification from this person on my phone. But what is love to me, really? I once thought I knew what it was, but sudden breakups and toxic relationships have kind of damaged that. I don't know if I'm confusing love with an unhealthy infatuation now. Honestly, that's probably the case, but I'll never learn. Especially when the obvious signs of rejection are overridden by the small acts of kindness. Don't be like me, people. Story 27. Our First Christmas. I had a brilliant plan to get her something meaningful, as she is very eco-conscious and always jokes about how I am terminating the polar bears when I don't recycle, turn off my computer, lights, etc. Biting my lower lip and grinning, I thought I was flipping brilliant. I would adopt a polar bear via one of those online wildlife conservation funds and have it in her name. This would be epic. About two weeks before Christmas, I told her I had gotten the best, funniest gift ever. No way, she said. I got you the best gift ever. What? So we started giving hints. Me. It's cold. Her. No way. I guess mine could be cold, too. Me. It's white as snow. Her. Oh, I guess mine is very white, too. Me. It's big. But even small things affect it. Her. Wait, what? Eventually, she blurted it out in the parking garage of the mall. My mom knew for over a week we got each other the same exact gift, a WWF polar bear donation, adoption, and polar bear stuffed teddy. College sweethearts together for almost five years. Story 28. I was lying on my bed with her, and we brought up my dead dog. I quickly decided to watch something with her so she could be Little Spoon and not see me about to cry. Well, I let her pick, and she picked a Futurama episode that seemed to be relevant. About 30 seconds into Jurassic Bark, I was weeping like an idiot but keeping it silent and doing my damnedest not to let her find out. Well, as I wept throughout the entire episode, she just lied there watching, and afterwards she immediately turned around, held me close in her arms, and started weeping too. She was crying about the lost things in her life, and I was crying about the lost things in mine. It was at this moment that I fell for her. Story 29. It was after the puppy love phase was over and the feelings and emotions were still intense. I had butterflies all the time while around her, but I was comfortable with it. To be honest, I don't think they ever went away. I still get them sometimes when I see her, lately. Normally, as I progress through relationships, I typically have a period where I feel somewhat to strangely awkward, but I never had that with her. I always felt at home and amazing while in her presence. I went on to share some things I loved and thought she would find interesting, and coincidentally, I introduced her to Reddit, Peggle, Felicia Day, and Doc Horrible, and many other things. She, in turn, brought me into a music and boarding scene, and even Harry Potter, which I was boycotting for years. We shared everything. Every moment matters. We talked on various subjects, and while sometimes they were on the topic of work, 
which is a notoriously dry subject to me, I was drawn in and loved hearing whatever she had to say whenever she had to say it. No matter what the subject, I am a guy. And sometimes it seemed like I was not listening. And sometimes I didn't retain everything. But I was always interested, and I always wanted to know more about her. I genuinely wanted to see her dreams fulfilled and brought to fruition. Her smiles lit me up inside, and I wanted to be there to support and help and offer anything I could if she ever should need it. I wanted to be there with her, for her for as long as she would let me. Each night, I went to bed with her in my arms, felt like I had the most precious artifact in my possession, and it was my job to protect as if she were the key to saving the world, even if it really was just my world. It still wasn't even at this point that I really even accepted what I was feeling. I kept playing it off. You can also disregard the video playing as it is unrelated. I just wanted a sound bite from it. Days, weeks, and months went by, and things still felt amazing. I craved the moments we had together. The more I learned of her, the more I wanted to know that never went away. I started accepting this, and it started effing with me. I haven't been one for commitments, as I am scared of being another statistic. The guy who loses everything to an angsty female. I have a thing with avoiding the L word, and almost call it a phobia. And if I hadn't had it slip out while with her, it wouldn't have continued. And I still would avoid that word like a plague. I still had and have commitment issues, but exclusively for her, I wanted I work to change that. I started breaking these fears, but in the end I got one of the phrases you could ever hear uttered to me. Too little. Too late. I don't feel it's ever too late, however. Sorry, I got sidetracked. The way she came along and affected me gave me flashbacks to that scene in the Sandlot, where Babe Ruth was like, Most people never take the chance, either because they're too scared or they don't recognize it when it spits on their shoes. I wasn't stupid enough to let this pass me by. So I tried. Once I started taking control over my insecurities, I realized how much I cared for her and started loving her without fear. I haven't had anyone come close to making me feel this way in a very, very, very long time. I wasn't about to let myself miss this. I realized that she was the person I wanted to share everything else I had and would have in life with. She is the one I wanted to build it around. I still am a mess of emotions anytime anything reminds me of us. She accepted me for the geek I was. I never felt out of place around her. If I could go back and tell her all the things she needed and wanted to hear for a second chance, although not quite here yet now, I would take it up. I still love the fudge out of you. Maybe we can talk about the future again. Sometime in the future. Story 30. This is going to start off sounding bad. I promise it gets better. A while back, when my boyfriend and I were in the more wild stages of our relationship, we took some ecstasy pills together. I remember being on that high and knowing in the back of my mind that every single time I said I loved him, it was only spilling out of my mouth because of the sweets. Both of us had been pretty closed off before that. It took us about a month before we could touch affectionately and hug and stuff despite having close relationships several times a day. We both scoffed at the idea of really traditional relationships. We would always tell each other how we didn't like the idea of serious relationships or marriage or PDA couples. So this while I love you thing was really intense. I was scared that the candy was going to wear off and I would have made a fool of myself in front of the first steady relationship I had ever had. Then about two days after everything had worn off, I realized that everything I felt on the candy hasn't gone away. It just took using it to be willing to open myself to the possibility that this guy really was someone I wanted to be with for the rest of my life. It hit me like a ton of bricks and it even hurt a little. Because by reputation, neither of us were at all suited for that kind of thing. I can't approximate how long we had been dating when we did that, but we have been together three years plus and lived together. It's weird because we have really flipped. We went from this casual hookup party couple to those annoying two people you see at the grocery store hugging while they walk down the aisle to get ingredients for dinner and a movie. Story 31. It was the third date. She had requested I wait in the car so that her family did not give me the runaround. She came to the door in a red shirt with an M on it and jeans. The sun hit her just right. Her fluffy hair was shining in the light. It was tired back in a ponytail, and she gave me that gorgeous tooth smile that melted me like a piece of white chocolate on the pavement. She started towards the car in a reserved manner. I got out of the car and opened the door for her. I remember I rolled my foot in my haste. I remember my heart pounding and feeling waves or elation running through my person. I was happy. 
I felt that feeling was only growing. It started out rather small. But as time went on and we spent more and more time together, things inside me just kind of clicked together. I told her how I felt three months later. That was more than three years ago. Sigh. I miss that stupid, stupid women sometimes. We broke up around four months ago. She accused me of cheating. I didn't cheat. I could never cheat on her. I thought we had finally figured each other out, starting existing together, happy and content. We had our rough patches, dated off and on for a time. Through it all, we managed to keep the other in a special place in our hearts and minds. For now, things are over. I don't know how I feel about it going any other way. She has been the only person that has ever had this kind of affect on me. The only person that has ever made me feel this way. If I had known things were going to turn out like this, I still would have come back when she told me she had cancer again, helping her through it. Knowing that she was getting better and not going to pass away was perhaps the best news I've ever gotten, which was a wonderful turnaround from the crippling, destroyed feeling I felt when she first told me. Making her feel like a human being when she felt like a wounded animal made me so happy. And even during the worst of it, at least what I got to see, she never stopped being the most beautiful person I've ever seen. Oh, no, it, God, oh, no, it. This is the first time I've cried in such a long time. Story 32. He was never really gentle at all and eventually joined the military, and we were very newly in a relationship after being friends for years. One day we went on this hike up this mountain near his home. Turns out he has packed us dinner with all my favorite fast food. We watched the sunset from the top of the mountain while eating, until all the crazy giant spiders came out of nowhere and started trying to attack. Okay, so they weren't attacking, but they were creepy as fudge and there was probably about twenty. Anyway, we start to head down the mountain, and being the clumsy one that I am, I slide and this rock attacked my ankle. Why do rocks have such anger problems? So we get back to his house and my ankle is all bloody. So I go to the bathroom, sitting on the counter, with my foot in the sink, waiting for the impending doom of stinging cow that he's going to put on me, and probably call me a baby. Instead, he gently washes all the dirt off, cleans it all, and puts Neosporin on it. I had never seen him be so gentle before with anything, but I realized he'd do anything for me. Four years later, I'm still loving him.